the answer is that the phenotype that has low heritability will be more susceptible to environmental variation because it's being affected by environmental variation that caused us to assign it low heritability in the first place. Now, I want to end by considering the extent to which environmental factors in genes can have the same effects. And a wonderful example comes from tulips. Some of you may know that several centuries ago, one of the very first catastrophic financial bubbles was people who were buying and selling exotic tulips. And we now know that these exotic tulips had the, their dramatic phenotypes. This is an illustration of, uh, this is a very old illustration of one of those tulips, that this dramatic phenotype is caused by infection with a virus called tulip break virus. This wasn't realized at the time. Um, and it's the virus that's causing this dramatic stripe coloration that was so valued. Unfortunately, we still like these tulips, but the virus greatly reduces the viability of the plants, and it's very hard to make any money selling tulips that are infected with a lethal virus. This is a modern variety of the same tulip, a tulip that is infected with the virus. So what geneticists have done is they've bred tulips that express the same phenotype because of a variant allele. So this is a tulip that has a very similar phenotype to these tulips. It's not infected by the virus. Instead, it has a variant allele controlling fl flower color that doesn't affect the viability of the plant. So it's easy to take for granted the effects of environment on our phenotypes and to forget about it when you're thinking about genetics. But of course, everything that happens to us affects our phenotype. Um, we obviously think of things like scars and stains, um, surgeries, having children, getting old. These all obviously affect our phenotype. But there's lots of other factors as well. Every time we get an infection, it affects our immune system permanently. That's how immunity works. That's how vaccines work. Every time we're treated with an antibiotic, it changes the bacteria on our bodies and the bacteria inside our bodies in ways that can be permanent and that certainly affect other attributes of our phenotype. And even thinking and learning, taking this course, you are permanently changing the wiring of your brain by listening to me talk. I think that's really cool. So we've considered how height is affected by environmental factors. And then we backed up to think about heritability in general, how heritability is something that we measure. It's not a defined property of a set of genes and phenotype. Rather, heritability depends on the kinds of genetic variation that are present in the population that we're measuring. So we might measure different heritabilities for the same phenotype in different populations. It also depends on the amount of environmental variation so that we would measure a higher heritability in an environment where there was very little environmental effect on the, vari on the phenotype. And then we talked a little bit about how genetic and environmental factors can be hard to distinguish with the example of tulip viruses and the example of Parkinson's disease, where the interaction between genetic and environmental factors was a tool that let us find the genetic factors that we otherwise couldn't see. Coming up next, we're going to consider one more component of phenotypic variation, and that's the effect of chance. And then we're going to go on to three lectures about the genetics of cancer, where chance, again, plays a big role. I hope to see you there.